In this video, we're going to learn how to make a walking NPC in Roblox Studio. So to get started, we're going to actually want a NPC. So let's go ahead and search up for, I'm just going to search for a noob and I'm going to add in this noob NPC that I see here. Now I'm going to go ahead and position it so that it looks normal and it's actually set up properly. And if you guys already have an NPC, you can go ahead and skip this step, but I'm just going to go inside of the noob and I'm going to make sure it has a humanoid and it has a humanoid root part. So now we're going to want to add an animator inside of the humanoid if there's not already one. And then we're going to add in an animation object and we're going to rename this to walk. So if you guys already have a walk in animation, then you can go ahead and skip this step. But if you don't, then what we can do is we can open up the toolbox again and we could search for walking animation. And then we could go ahead and click on this best walking animation and enter it into Roblox Studio. And let's go ahead and go into this folder, delete this, delete this, and delete the thumbnail. Now we're going to have this R6 model. And what we're going to want to do is go into animation saves. Real quick, guys, if you guys have been wanting to learn how to script on Roblox, check out the first link in the description. And then we're going to want to go over to avatar and open the animation editor. And now that we have the animation editor open, we can select any one of these walks. I'll just select this walk right here. And then let's go ahead and click ignore for all these and click OK. So now we have a walking animation. And then I'm just going to click on these three dots right here. I'm going to click set animation priority as movement. Now we're going to go ahead and click on these three dots again and click publish to Roblox. And we could just rename this to walking animation and then click save. And once it is saved, we want to go ahead and copy the ID down. And once we have the ID copied, we could actually go ahead and delete this whole thing and exit out of the animation editor. Now, instead of our noob animation, we can go back to our animation that we created and go ahead and paste the animation ID. So now that we have all that set up, let's go ahead and actually be able to start moving the NPC. So inside of server script service, let's go ahead and make a script and we could rename the script to NPC mover. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the pathfinding service. So we're going to say local pathfinding service is equal to game colon get service pathfinding service. Now let's go ahead and get our NPC. So we'll say local NPC is equal to game dot workspace. Wait for child noob. Now let's get the humanoid. So we'll say local humanoid is equal to NPC. Wait for child humanoid. And then let's get the humanoid root, root part. So we'll say local humanoid root part is equal to NPC. Wait for child humanoid root part. Okay, now that we have all this, let's go ahead and make a function. So we'll say local function move NPC. And let's go ahead and create a path with the pathfinding service. So we'll say local path is equal to pathfinding service create path. And then let's go ahead and put in some parameters in here. So we'll say agent radius is equal to two. And then we'll say agent height is equal to five. And then we'll change agent can jump equal to true. Now, all this is doing is it's basically saying this is how wide our character is and this is how tall it is and this is pretty normal for like a normal npc if your npc is bigger then you can go ahead and change these and then we're just making it so that they're able to jump so now let's go ahead and compute the path so we'll say path colon compute async and the start position is going to be the humanoid root part dot position and the finish we're actually going to go ahead and make a part so we can go ahead and make a part and let's say we just want it to be for example Let's just put it like all the way over here, for example. And then we can go ahead and put this down on the floor and then we will go ahead and anchor it. And then we could also make it transparent or semi transparent and then turn can collide off. And then we'll just rename this to destination. So we'll say local destination is equal to game dot workspace. Wait for child destination dot position. So for the finish, we'll go ahead and put in destination. And then once the path is computed, we'll do local waypoints is equal to path colon get waypoints. And then we can go ahead and loop through all the waypoints. So we'll say four underscore comma waypoints in I pairs waypoints view. And then we could do humanoid colon move to waypoint dot position. And then we could do humanoid dot move to finished colon wait. So it waits until this move to is finished. And then for example, let's say that there is something in the way of the humanoid and it needs to jump. What we could do is we could say if waypoint dot action is equal to enum dot pathway dot pathway point action dot jump, then humanoid dot jump is equal to true. OK, and this is actually all we need to move the NPC. So what we could do is we could add a task that wait for we could do like five seconds, for example, and then we could just call this move NPC function. So if we play the game, as you can see, after about five seconds, the noob starts moving towards the destination. Now, if we wanted the actual walking animation to play, what we could do is we can add a script into starter player scripts and make sure it is a local script. 
and we could just rename this to walking animation. All right, so let's go ahead and copy a few things from the script and let's go ahead and copy all of this right here and paste it into here. And now let's get the animator. So we'll say local animator is equal to humanoid wait for child animator. And then we'll say local walk animation is equal to humanoid wait for child walk. And then we'll say local walk anim track is equal to animator load animation. And then we'll have the walk animation here. So now at the very top, we're going to actually have run service. So we'll say local run service is equal to game colon get service run service. And then down here, we'll say run service dot dot heartbeat colon connect to a function. And then in here, we're going to say if humanoid root part dot assembly linear velocity dot magnitude is greater than one, then and then we're going to say if not walk anim track dot is plain, then and then we'll do walk anim track colon play. And then down here, we're going to say else if walk anim track dot is plain, then we'll do walk anim track colon stop. All right, so let's go ahead and test out this walking animation. And after about five seconds, the noob should start moving. And then once it reaches its point, it goes ahead and stops. So guys, that is how we make a walking NPC on Roblox Studio. And you can go ahead and change this destination, obviously, to wherever you want to move the NPC. But that is the end of the video. I hope that helped you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.